Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome to my overview for the upcoming update to Kerbal Space Program version 0.21. In the new update, we've got a completely overhauled space center, both on the interior and the exterior of it. The VAB and Space Plane Hangar both have completely new interiors with shiny new shadow graphics, and with animated trucks and cargo lifts buzzing around the place. On the exterior, everything looks very different. The space plane hangar's got a big tower for you to buzz, and the VAB has got helicopter pads on the roof, which is going to be fun to play around with in the future, I'm sure. And there's a completely new building. There's actually two completely new buildings, but only one of them is actually being used so far, and that is the Astronauts Complex building where you can basically hire astronauts and you can check on astronauts' current status and you can do all sorts of different things like looking at their stupidity and their courage. There is also a new description field whenever you make a craft either in the VAB or the space plane hangar where you can write up a few lines to describe your spacefaring contraption. In terms of crew management, it's now possible to assign crew manually to missions before launch, both in the VAB and in the space plane hangar, as well as from launch sites such as the launch site or the runway. And there are completely new launch dialogues, so new options when you launch a pad and end or launch a flight and end a flight. Before we go into that though, in terms of advanced SAS, the logic for that has been completely rewritten. And one of these changes includes that the old SAS modules, not the advanced SAS, just the old SAS, are now reaction wheels that basically apply torque whilst consuming electricity, which, to be fair, I thought was exactly what they used to do, apart from the consuming electricity bit. But apparently not, but now they do, which is good. So if you only need if you all if you need some any more torque. God, I can't talk. If you need any more talk, <laughs> then you can use those old SAS modules. The new SAS logic allows applying manual input whilst SAS is on, which lets you turn and set the ship's attitude without having to constantly toggle it. That's going to be a massive change in playstyle for me, because you know how I like to hammer my T key or F key to try and get that to happen. So that's going to be interesting to see how that affects my flights. In terms of terrain, there's a new different, or the, both the moon and Kerbin are now different. Uh, the moon's got a lot more craters, they're in fact procedurally generated, which makes it a much more hazardous environment to land on, you've got to watch out for that. In terms of Kerbin, we've got completely new terrain with largely new mountains, hills, valleys and coastlines, which basically just make it a bit more interesting. To fly over, which will be quite useful in the upcoming live stream of mine, which I'll mention briefly at the end. Uh, let's go back to those new dialogues on launching and ending flights. When you end a flight, it's no longer possible to end a flight. Uh, you options you now have are to revert, which is basically to quick load back to when you launched, or back to your uh, what's it called construction facility. Or you can recover from the tracking station if you've landed down on Kerbin, which will allow you to save the Kerbal and put him back in your astronaut complex or your, in your training ground. And you can otherwise, if you don't want to recover the parts and him, you can terminate the flight, which will just presumably make them self-destruct and kill the pilot. The space center button now leaves when you press escape now leaves you now allows you to leave the flight at any time and it gives you a warning about necessary saving restrictions basically meaning that if you leave whilst you're launching when you come back you won't still be launching it'll quick load you back to the launch to the nearest save point and that is all of the main restrictions main restrictions that's all of the main features in the new update Miscellaneous Final 2, uh, we've or Final 3 actually, one of these isn't on the changelog. Uh, we've improved, or they've improved, the in-game shadowing to enable shadows at much larger distances, so things can look a bit more pretty from further away. And there are several new parts added from the KSPX pack as stock content. That KSPX mod pack, which is really, really good. And I'll go over those parts in just a second. The third miscellaneous improvement is that the developer debug console, which you access by pressing Alt F12, the hack gravity option now is a toggle. So when you hack gravity, you don't have to go to Space Center and reload the save in order to turn it off. You can just click unhack gravity. This is going to help a lot with some upcoming parkour kind of cinematic things that people could make that I might make. We don't know. We'll see. But there's definitely a lot of uh, there's definitely a lot of 
a potential for such parkour kind of running things and just cinematics in general because the exterior of the new buildings they have stairwells and they have rooftops and vents and things for you to run and jump across really 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 cool I just wish jump Kerbals could jump a little bit higher and in terms of why do I say in terms of a lot the new parts that have been added are a new probe core which is nice for three-way symmetry. There's another little Rockmax engine, weaker than an LV-99. There's a new half-sized small fuel tank, which I think is probably going to be fairly useful for side-mounted engines. There's a new probe RCS tank. There is a side-mounted range of things, from probe engines to monopropellant RCS containers and to xenon containers. We have bi, tri and quad adapters for larger rockets, quad adapters for medium rockets, and small Rockmax adapter and small larger adapter for all kinds of rockets, presumably. And finally, there's a new inline probe battery. And that is the end of my overview of the upcoming update to point two one. Thanks guys very much for watching, I hope this was informative, hopefully you now get a glimpse of what is coming, and after this update, it seems like we're building up to career mode, because there is one final thing that was mentioned in the, change, in the change log, which is that data is going to be collected from your save unless you, uh, unless you opt out of this, and it will collect data from your missions, from your different crafts, presumably gather that in order to provide essential information for the upcoming career mode, so it's going to be put to use designing it, I should imagine which is going to be fun, but not in this update. If you liked the video, please do like the video. Finally, my upcoming live streams. On Monday the 5th till Friday the 9th of August, I'm going to be doing daily live streams at 1 uh, at 12pm till 3pm GMT on each day. There's going to be a video coming soon with more detailed timings and other times for and times for other time zones. And we're going to be doing this in support of Charity Water. It's one mission over those 15 hours, or longer, depending. One mission, which is to drive to the North Pole. Interesting terrain is going to make that a lot more interesting. So, please do keep your, uh, keep your calendars free for that. We're hoping to raise two grand in dollars, that is, two thousand dollars, which is roughly one thousand three hundred pounds or so. And it's all for a worthy cause, so do come on down, do keep an eye out on the channel for that video, and I shall see you all next time.